Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode we're going to be continuing with the Explorer X mission but first I took a look at the contract screen and it looks like we've got an Explore Gilly contract and since we're heading over to EVE anyway I might as well pick this up as well. We'll give our probes a little workout. We've got a lot of contracts to fulfill but hopefully in this episode we're going to fulfill the orbital station around EVE, Explore EVE, uh, position a satellite in a specific orbit ar around EVE there, and there, and explore Gilly. Now I don't know if I have enough probes to do all that. Let's see, um, the station will be itself, that's fine. Um, explore EVE, uh, we're going to have to lose a probe on landing on EVE, um, if we even manage to land it safely. So that's one probe down, that's another probe, that's another probe, and then one will be coming. But, uh, I think we can bring the Gilly one back, maybe, depending on fuel. So, yeah, maybe we have enough probes to handle all of these. We're gonna get a lot done this time. Alright, uh, so, but before we get to Explorer X, we have to send some supplies to our station around the moon. So, let me handle that first. Okay, so what I've done is I've sort of converted an old supply lander. Remember, we sent a supply lander to the moon initially to connect up with our lunar base and uh, deliver food, water, oxygen to that base and I've sort of converted it into just a supply probe that will dock with the station and so it now has RCS for docking and all. It'll uh, retain this stage here as it docks that's why the RCS ports are this low because that's where the center of gravity is while it has this stage so technically they should be higher because they'll probably deplete most of this fuel by the time it docks so let me shift them up a little bit there um, yeah so make sure it doesn't collide with anything and so that's our supply probe and I'm using the Sparrow launcher which is a recoverable launcher uh, it won't recover this second stage of course because that transfers to the moon but the rest of it is recoverable the launch stage you might recall it uh, it's pretty distinctive it's got these uh, miniaturized LV T30 engines that tend to overheat we'll try and save them uh, we've got a lot of Delta V to slow down, so that's positive, but we'll have to see how well we can do that. And of course an LV T45 in the center, and these nifty little LT pod landing assemblies. Alright, and so we'll see if we can retrieve this again after delivering our supplies. Alright, let's take it out to the launch pad. I'm not going to arm FMRS, I, I think this is good. definitely going to get to orbit, so don't need to do that. SAS on, throttle up, and yep, let's launch. I thought about making the probe itself reusable, but uh, I don't think that's necessary for now. I don't know what the, I've, I didn't check what the relative cost of the probe is compared to the cost of the launcher. And we're retrieving the launcher. Uh, the whole thing costs about 50,000 funds altogether. We'll see how much we recover with the launcher. If it turns out that the probe is expensive, we can actually give it fuel, have it dock with the Earth orbit station, uh, and then just uh, add more, add more uh, food, water, and oxygen to it and have it transfer back over to the moon. So we could just have it uh, be a moon and resupply thing in orbit. We don't have to bring it back down at all. One thing I maybe should do is have separate tanks on this. It's just one big tank. And so the center of mass is going to be pretty pretty high. Well, it can definitely drop fairings. Fairings are off. Okay, so coasting to Apwapsis now. Plenty of Delta V left in this stage, of course. The supply lander was much heavier because it had its own fuel uh, in order to land on the moon, so that's quite a bigger burden. Oh, this thing is wiggling. That's weird. So yeah, Explorer X is still on its way out from Carbon Sphere of Influence. It's, it hasn't left yet. It probably won't leave before we actually get this over to the moon takes a little bit of time to get out there. Okay, 103 by 101, just about. 104 by 101. Okay, only 400 Delta V left. Not as good as I was hoping for. And ignite extension. 
Okay, it is away. And it's got plenty of Delta V to transfer to the moon. So, return of the Sparrow. Well, maybe it does have two... Yeah, it does have two tanks. Hold on. We can shift this fuel down into this tank. Should have known I would have done that. Okay. We don't have a whole lot of spare electric charge. Okay, I think we're too high. Not much fuel left. We'll probably need smell. The parachute should actually be able to bear the mass of this. It's only eight tons and they're pretty big. So, okay, here's overheating. Uh, oh, r right, right, right. These pretend to overheat, but don't actually do it, I hope. I think that was the MO, right? Yeah, 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 they're like that. It's because they're resized. They pretend to have their resized heating, but uh, they actually have their standard limits. Where are we? Here. Hmm. They're probably gonna overshoot. Come on, come on, come on. Slow us down. Oh, not bad, not bad. Okay, cool. Right, let's get out of time warp. Okay, we should be safe. Parachutes. Okay, full parachute deployment. Reduced to 5 meters per second, thereabouts. Okay, it's stable. Recover. It looked like it was tipping a little bit. And that's when the game crashed. But no problem. Uh, we've got some OV6 probe debris, but uh, there happens to be a supply probe, so let me recover it like this after having restarted the game. Alright, uh, no science earned, obviously. But only 3.3 kilometers away from the KSC, 97.8%. 35,000 funds recovered so basically I guess the supply drone is about 15,000 maybe less than that we burned a lot of fuel too but yeah so no worries let's continue on with our supply mission okay I think the station is going around uh, counterclockwise around the moon prograde so I think this is the approach we have to take and here is our supply vessel Anyway, it looks like the Sparrow is a pretty reliable, uh, recoverable launch vehicle for small payloads. So, and this is uh, 3.5 tons to low carbon orbit. Not bad. Huh, this is carrying a lot more mod propellant than I thought it would be. Really should drop the size of that tank a bit. Alright, that will do. Let's head on over. You can sort of see our swirling cloud of stuff in orbit around the moon there. And here's the sphere of influence. Okay, lunar orbit. And that's probably close enough for now. Okay, here we go. Alright, adjustment burn. A little bit awry. Hold on. Okay, I think uh, we're 
We're about 70 meters away on our closest approach distance. I think that's all right. Oh, wait. No. Got rid of the maneuver node and decided to push me to 400. Oh, no. 70, 200, something. Okay. We're probably too far out to figure that out exactly. Anyway, we've got an encounter. We've got a safe orbit. Let's head over there. Let's head over to the other side. Okay, so we've got some stuff docked already, but we've got docking ports free as well. We've got the half moo here for refueling. We've got the the rescue ship. Let's give this thing a little bit of a roll. Uh, let's say this way. Okay, well, hope that uh, Richmore and Pepe didn't get the, too dizzy or anything. No motion sickness. Depends on where they are, if they're in uh, the somewhat gravitational environment, pseudo-gravity. Whoa, oh, oh, not what I want. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, shoot, oh, shoot, oh, shoot, oh, shoot. Ah. Ah. I accidentally pushed the wrong key, if you can believe that. Okay, um, so we lost two solar panels on this thing. It's a good thing we didn't do more damage. I guess I'm not really awake today. That is the first time I've collided on docking. In... Have I done it while I was recording videos ever? I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe. I think I've done it before while recording a video. But it's been a while. And never for the reason where I pushed the wrong button, I don't think. So, even after all this time, incidents may occur. Okay, we are docked after losing two solar panels. Probably nothing else. Okay, so what's our situation? All right, uh, Lunar Station 1, which is where we are, now has 201 days. And that's the minimum anyway. So we're all well provisioned. Let's head to Explorer X. Okay, here we are with Explorer X, already a fair way out from Kerbin and the Moon, a little bit of debris following us there. And let me turn off that, now that I turn to Prograde to make this look proper. And let us continue. Okay, I think it's decided to let me get out of Kerbin's sphere influence, so there's a maneuver and a good Eve periapsis as a result of it. Now this thing turns pretty darn slow. Let's uh, tell Smart ASS to turn it towards the maneuver node because it's going to take a little bit of time. Still an almost 80 ton vessel here. Okay, so here we are, and the question is can these little telescopic pistons? bear the brunt of the thrust from these engines. I'm about to find out. Gotta throttle it a little bit. Now of course this thing doesn't have much thrust to weight ratio in the first place. Okay, well that's full power. Looks like they can pretty well. No apparent bending of any kind. No indication that roll, yaw, or pitch have to be adjusted. Which means that they are stable. There's nothing having to compensate for something. Okay, so that aspect of the Explorer X is a su success at this point. The real question will be how the probes do now. Well, we have to air break though. Uh, slowing down around EVE might be a little bit tricky. 
Oh, so either we have a contract or we could get a contract to put an uh, asteroid, not an asteroid, a satellite in orbit around the sun like that. Wow, that's got to be a fun one. Definitely going to want an ion engine for that. Now that's pretty close to our error breaking altitude, so I will keep it there. And we will continue in. Being oriented north-south is fine. Okay, here we go. We see the two satellites that we have to put into EVE orbit there. Those are going to be fun. Let's see if our probes will be able to do that. But anyway, uh, first, this is quite a, quite an inclination we've got with respect to EVE. Uh, looks like periapsis is going to end up crashy. Alright, so now it is time for me to check air braking calculator to see how close I should be going. Okay, so air braking calculator says 73.7 kilometers. So do I dare go that low? But that's uh, using an apoapsis near the orbit of Gilly, so we're talking about that would be pretty high. That's basically minimal to get into orbit around EVE is that 73.7. Well, it's about the right height. I just, I'll keep it a little bit higher though. Okay, we will try that out uh, with some trepidation and concern for Podzer and uh, Chadbro. Okay. Well, uh, there's no point uh, keeping these pods extended right now. So, uh, let's bring them in. And let's retract the habitation ring. Okay. So now all trimmed up for re-entry I suppose it's pretty tough being willing to air break something like this with deadly re-entry installed without testing it beforehand I guess the docking port is the logical thing to test the temperature out on let's just check Maybe these, the fuel tanks of the probes might be better. Well, it's not getting too hot, but it's also not slowing me down particularly much. A few meters per second here and there by the looks of it. Okay, we're headed back up. Doesn't look like the heat is a problem. So now getting into orbit is a problem. All right, well, I'm going to start retro burning now. Okay, we finally have an orbit. We're about 10 degrees off from Gilly's orbit. I'm only bringing it down because I don't want time to apoapsis to be too long. Our orbital period should be... Well, two days is not bad, but let's say a day and a half. And then we have to boost our periapsis on the apoapsis side. Well... Re-entry was, uh, not re-entry, air braking was successful. That's a huge plus. Okay, well, since we're not going to be re-entering again, let's deploy everything. Okay. That is all right. So now we need to take a look at our station contract. Whoa. Uh, I think we've neutralized controls. So, just waiting. Build station. 
Well, I think I've neutralized controls, but it doesn't seem to accept that. Let me take SAS off. Okay, finally, neutralize control for 10 seconds is complete and we have built our orbital station around Eve excellent so next explore Eve will be my next thing to do and we'll get to see how much shelter V one of these little probes actually has okay the pods the engine pods are decently away from everything so that these guys can so I'm going to decouple node and switch to this Okay, just gently drifting away, which is fine by me. Let me activate its engines, though. Why won't it let me activate its engines? It's got a controller. Yeah. Huh. I haven't locked stages. Let me just. Okay, well that's one. Come on. Making me do things the hard way. Okay, so 2,436 vacuum delta V. So that's pretty good. It's got a decent amount of mod propellant for something its size. But let's get ourselves a little bit better away from... Okay, SAS please. Away from our mothership that'll do. It looks like a hardy sort of thing, doesn't it? What it doesn't have is any way of recharging its batteries though. Darn. Okay, so the station contract is fulfilled, but our probes are insufficient. We really need to have some solar panels on them. That was a bad mistake on my part. I mean, of course, trying to get them nice and tight on the on the Explorer X. I had a lot of considerations to take care of, but including these little RCS tanks, but no good now. <sighs> yep, I don't think this is going to be very useful. It's only got one hour, and we've got a long time remaining before we get to periapsis. Hmm. Okay, uh, so we're gonna have to give the Explorer X some better probes, but the Explorer X can get close enough to Eve to drop off one, so let's do that. Okay, so here we're close to Eve. One other thing I neglected was decent lighting. Fine. How far are we from periapsis? Seven minutes. So yeah, we can we can decouple a probe here, and it'll last an hour, right? Decouple node. Okay. Well, this one will also not be needing its RCS very much. So we'll just use that to burn away from the Explorer. And that'll actually save us some of our... Oh, it already has diminished electric charge. That's not very helpful. Anyway, it'll save us some mass. I'm, I suppose pressing space bar isn't going to work here at either? No. I wonder what that is, 22.4, oh that's, that's the other probe, right, because it followed us, but it doesn't have any power left. Well, it, it might have power left because I'm not paying any attention to it, and when you don't pay attention to something, uh, it retains power, but I'm not going to use that trick. Okay, so, retrograde. Let's prograde, retrograde. And so I need to manually bring this down 
into the atmosphere, so I have to kill off a lot of velocity all the way down. Or, I mean, we could uh, try and force ourselves. How much will it cost to force ourselves into the atmosphere on this side? Also a lot, but we've got that too. Okay, make sure we're not going to hit anything. Point it in this direction. Doesn't look like it. Okay, I think we can do a little bit more than that too. Let's say right there. Okay. Retrograde. Of course, we don't have parachutes on these probes. They are lightweight probes. Let's see how it goes. We obviously, one thing we can't do is we can't uh, go around. We can't, uh, if it doesn't pull us down all the way, we can't go all the way to apoapsis and come back in because we'll lose the electric charge. So whatever the atmosphere doesn't do to us, we're going to have to pull in ourselves. Oh, right. Uh, we are in orbit. Let's do the thermometer okay uh, let's transmit that data before the, there's any issue with that okay good before the antenna might snap or something achieve orbit from space ah oh, it's from space oh so we didn't do it but we can it's alright so Explorer X could probably rendezvous with Gillian and drop a probe. That's a plan. It's not going to bring us all the way down. So I'm going to start retrofiring. Okay, we are in space now, I think. Yeah. Oh, but that uh, takes a huge chunk of electric charge. But we transmitted we transmitted the data from space around Eve, so that that part's fulfilled. Uh, I don't like my periapsis going like that, but I don't have too much of a choice at this point. Okay, this is gonna be a pretty sharp, pretty sharp descent, and that means a lot of heat. Okay, here we go again, but this time it's for keeps. We just, we really just need either one of the scientific instruments and the antenna to survive. Unfortunately, the antenna's right at the bottom there, so. So if anything explodes, it probably will go too. And we're heating up pretty, pretty dramatically already. Loud sounds, loud sounds. Oh. Okay, what's our heat now? Heat, heat, heat is still going up, still going up, still going up. Oh, fudge. I think that was the end of our engines. and the fuel tank and the antenna oh well so really antenna should go higher I, if I if only I'd put the antenna up here we'd still die probably I think let's let's find out let's find out if this thing could survive it's got a reaction wheel <laughs> pretty serious reaction wheel and it's got RCS Let's see if it can land safely. It's a little bit twitchy though. Okay, well, it wants to flip around like that. It's not very good, is it? 
Okay, well, it'll just have to be twitchy. I want it to go... Shh, come on, come on. You're not going to do this to me. Do I have to use RCS to hold you? Might. The electric charge is going down too quickly. Oh, heck, you know what? It can land on his stocking port. Why not? Why not? Oh, we are descending through the clouds of Eve. Very slowly. Still going way too fast to survive, of course. But I'm going to see if RCS can handle that. Let, let's do a test RCS burn here. Okay. So it can slow us down. Oh, not too, not enough. It hit a limit there. Yeah, I can only get down to 23 or so. Then it starts having trouble. Let's get SAS back on. Uh. Just the RCS unit, uh, well, the probe core, probe core survived, and a thermometer. Well, I'm not going to keep it. It's no point. Let's stop the RCS from burning. Okay, well, anyway, it uh, crash landed on EVE, which is basically how you should always do EVE slash Venus exploration the first time. All right, back to the Explorer. So what I think is, we'll have the Explorer fly by Gilly, but not get into orbit around Gilly. It'll drum off the probe, the probe will get into orbit, and then land on Gilly, and then uh, fulfill that contract. And so, but I'll have to do that in the next episode, I think. I think we've uh, done as much as I can here. So, yeah, let's go back to the Space Center to see what kind of rewards we've reaped from uh, at least getting the station part of this done, and the, the parts of the Explore Eve contract that we managed to fulfill. Okay, so mainly we wanted funds because we knew that the, the colony, uh, sending supplies to the colony, especially the machinery, was going to be expensive. Uh, so we've got some more funds, but we've got a lot more science. So let's take a look at that. I was pining for nukes because uh, really the Explorer X would be a lot better if we had uh, nuclear engines on it. So I'm going to research this. And let's see what else we need to try. Oh yes, uh, large fairings, right? Because we're limited to three meters. Um, and this will give us larger fairings and so we don't have to have that limitation and my rockets don't have to look ugly all the time. So let me research that as well. Don't know what that one is. Okay, uh, what's this one? Oh, this, this is probably uh, up to 10 meters. Okay, so here I'm, I'm guessing we're up to 5 meters or something like that. And then the next one up is 10 meters, but that, that takes a thousand signs, so we've got a lot more to go there. Okay, uh, we don't have enough for the higher tier. And... Well, there's that ion engine. Could have been useful for these probes as well. Probably not though, since they were trying to make landings and everything. Okay, I'll leave it be for now. I'm not going to unlock anything else, uh, even though we could. I'll have to think about these other, other possibilities. Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.